White, that's beautiful to say. 866-429-9755. Man, let's get to politics, man. Uh, let's, uh, John, Barack Obama, I asked a question earlier, I want to stay on this topic. Barack Obama, if you've been reading the news, has been sliding more and more towards the center. Now, I predicted this. This is what all presidential candidates do. They move towards the center. Do you think that's flip-flopping or a political move? I think it's wise. Yeah, I think it's wise. I don't think it's flip-flopping or political. I think that, um, you know, we, we, we've been so used to voting for black politicians around black issues. This is the first time we've had an opportunity to vote for a black progressive politician. That's someone who understands that's someone who understands both sides of the coin and is willing to be a mediator and a moderator for greater understanding amongst all people. So I think that of course he's moving closer to the center as any United States president should do, not just the president of black America. See? 866-429-9755. This is a rapper speaking, ladies and gentlemen. He breaks down all, all stereotypes of what a young African-American is. One, number two, what a young African-American rapper is. I'm sorry, MC is, because it's different between it rap and MC, and we're going to talk about that later on in the show. So you believe that Barack Obama should stay uh, move towards the center, but John McCain is moving towards the center. Of change. Uh, I'm not saying any politician is a messiah. I don't really believe in a messiah complex. I'm not looking for a new Moses and or Jesus. I'm looking for a politician who I believe is going to be, first and foremost, as honest as he can be with me and do what's best for the country as a whole. And, you know, I think that's Barack Obama on the personal side. And I, and I say this because I'm a black man with sons in America. I'm happy to see Barack Obama making headway and having a real shot at becoming the U.S. president because it takes the glass ceiling off. I, mean, I can tell my sons after that, it is not impossible to do anything, so nothing can be an excuse from there for. I remember being told I could be president in fifth grade and laughing. And now my son is in seventh grade and it's a realism for him. It can really happen. So I'm all about African Americans getting rid of all obstacles real and imagined and pushing forward. And I think that from a personal standpoint, seeing a black man make this kind of headway is going to do wonders within my household and a lot of <laughs> But uh, Barack Obama met with Hillary yesterday. Uh, less than 20 protesters outside uh, saying no deal, don't deal with Barack, you know, they don't want, there's no unity, that they, they're just, just less than 20 people. These are Hillary supporters? These are Hillary supporters? Yes, ex-Hillary well, ex -Hillary supporters who believe that Barack didn't really win the yeah. primary. It's too close to home. And they think that she should fight it out to the convention. Now it's less than 20. You know, let's, let's, let's say, state that. Uh, but it still is an issue because if there's 20 out there that's willing to go to Washington, there's probably another 100 sitting at home, sitting around saying, well, this is what's going to do. One of the comments was, they are going to vote for John McCain. Yeah. Right? Because they will not vote for Barack. Now, I want to set this up because when I, I, my feeling during the primary was if they stiff African Americans during this primary uh, season, they should vote for John McCain to teach the Democratic Party a lesson. These people feel the exact same way. They feel their candidate got stiff, they're going to vote for John McCain. Do you think it's smart? Do you agree with it? Uh, what do you feel about that? I mean, you, you know this, a lot of other people don't know My personal the theory is that African Americans should just withdraw from both political parties and just form a caucus and auction off their vote. I don't, I'm not a strong believer in the Democratic or Republican parties because you can argue, well, the Democrats are the only people who helped us in the 60s. But um, the Republicans are the ones who freed you from slavery. So I'm not I'm not big on aligning myself too much with one party. I'm I'm bigger on we there? I'm I'm bigger I'm not you know, I'm not big on aligning myself with a particular party. I'm bigger on what's gonna be best for my community. And I, I think that African Americans have to decide what's really important to us and we should vote in that interest and in that interest only. I mean, that's what other communities do. I admire other communities for doing it, and I feel we should do that. So, my deal was, if Barack wouldn't have gotten the nomination when he should have, if, if people are willing to fight against him, then I feel that we should withdraw from the, from the Democratic Party, and we definitely should take our vote somewhere else. So you agree with these women who are definitely would be voting in their, against their best interest, voting for John McCain because they feel that their their person uh, got beat out, got cheated. I'm an American, so you know it's a form of protest. I support I support all forms of protests as an American. 
I'm also an African American, which means I'm pretty much on the bottom of the lung, so on the rung of the ladder anyway. No, so, the Mexicans are. No, nah, no, nah, that that that's that that's been argued, but I don't think that's true. <laughs> um, you know, because they have a they have a solid community. I think that this is about our community. And I'm not saying like again, I say I'm voting for Barack because I feel he's gonna be the president for all of America. But personally, as an African American male, I have another set of interests in which I'm voting for him. And so if he's not honored by the Democratic Party, I will be encouraging my audience to withdraw from the Democratic Party. So then you, you said it, then I can't, then we should not get mad. Because I said this was going to happen. We should not get mad at these Hillary supporters who say that they're going to go vote for John McCain because it is. You know what's right. amazing to me? It amazes me also that no one blinks an eye when people say, well, um, women are voting for Hillary due to women's interests. But everyone seems to get angry when people say African Americans are voting for Barack Obama based on racial interests. Let, let me tell you, you know who gets angry? And it's the same thing I talk about every day. White. I've never had someone say to me, white, why are you doing it just because he's black? No one's ever asked me that question. Now, African Americans have, and they know I'm a conservative. They know I don't vote Democrat normally, although I'm supporting several here locally uh, because they are conservative Democrats, and I believe in what they're talking about. But the, the fact of the matter is, whites don't question that black votes for Barack. They question what who questions it is other African Americans. Well, make sure it's not because he's just black. Well, why does it happen? Why are you so ashamed to tell somebody? If you're black, you're voting for this man because you agree with his policies. And, and no matter what I thought of myself as a conservative, as anti, um, as anti-left, when I got in that booth, I found it impossible to vote against the potential of having a Jewish vice president. And he ended up voting Gore Lieberman. And and that's what I'm saying that um, all the blood that's been spilled because we and we as African Americans we love romanticizing that all the blood that was spilled and the buses that were boycotted and that's true. How do you validate that blood being spilled unless you say, I'm proud to be black. This is a validation and a sign that maybe we overcame. And if you never take the overcame step, you never get past where you are. If you want people to stop voting based on black or talking, coming from the black standpoint, then let's even out the playing field. And the only way you do that, or one of the ways you do that, is make sure a black man can become president so that all those excuses that we had are in the toilet and flush. He to take up a collection. My man, I'm telling you, <laughs> Killer Mike for the mayor of the I'll, I'll drop my support to play. everybody, brother. I'll be on you. I'll be a campaign manager and everything. But no, let's, let's move forward. Let, let's, let's move forward on that concept of what you just said, because I think it's something very important. Uh, let's go forward. Is the fact of the matter, I just had Markel Hutchins on. You know, talk about the bus boycotts and stuff. Andy Young, vile, vile, stupid comments, high school like comments Andy Young made back in the fall about Barack Obama. We chastised him. Not many people, but we did. You know the right side chastised him. I still have not heard anything out of Andy Young about his support of Barack. Not a peep. John Lewis switched uh, early on before Barack won a nomination. He was very wise politically to switch. I believe it was a political move, but it was a smart political move. Nothing wrong with that at all. John Lewis has on his website a picture with Barack Obama. Uh, do you think that he, the, the early non-support he did not get from these guys, should uh, in any way, shape, or form, should he come out and support a Mark Paul Hutchins or Abel Mabel because they were on his team from the beginning, or does he support the incumbents, John Lewis, now that they've switched over? What do you think? If you were Barack Obama, who would you be supporting? Would you pay back those guys for not supporting you early on and go with their challenges? I mean, politics is a game of vengeance and war, and we have to admit that. Like, we have to get off pretty politics. Politics is not a pretty game. So, um, I, I, um, the Lord says vengeance is mine, but He also said government is government, church is church. So, in matters of the government, I believe vengeance is mine. If I'm political candidate and you had the audacity to go against me and in favor of someone who you knew was not going to be best for our community, you knew her husband locked up more nonviolent drug offenders than any other U.S. president. You knew that your face or the face of your mothers and sisters was used. As the face of welfare reform when you weren't the most women on welfare. Knowing all that, I would definitely exercise this. My man. 866-429-9755. Let's get in on this conversation. I want you in the conversation. 866-429-9755. I keep saying this guy is not 
your normal MC. You got an album coming out. We're going to talk about that, too. He's got an album coming out next week, so you're going to try and talk about that. This is the kind of guy you kind of want your kids to listen to. You 